Hey, by the way, contents are hot. Caution, please. This is hot math. And just to prove it, we got some flames coming up here. Okay, you get the idea. This is hot stuff. I'm taking, uh, for my Math 7 students, I'm actually taking some problems straight out of the book. Okay, so let's call this number one, because that's what it is in the book on page, uh, I don't even know what page it is, 25 maybe? Okay, so I've got these two fractions and the book says do these ratios ratios make proportions please refer to previous video for instructions here so we're looking for it's important to always know what your answer is going to look like we're looking for yes or no plus evidence we want to prove it we don't want to guess right because you have a 50 50 chance but do you want to end up with a 50 percent of stuff right i sure don't i like to end up with a hundred and two percent of everything right ha that's my inside joke with myself okay so our previous video we put an equal sign in the middle, which really means we're asking a question. And we have so many strategies, right? We can look for a multiplier going this way. We can look for a divisor going this way. We can go up. We can go down, multiply, divide. We can cross multiply. So many strategies. But the thing is, we want a common multiplier or divisor. Now, most of you have probably already decided, yes, this one is good, but what kind of evidence can you give? That's what we're talking about here. Okay. I'm thinking back. I'm trying to find what's the easiest thing. I can see that um, half of 2 is 1, and if I go 2 plus 1, I get 3. I can see half of 18 is 9, and if I add those... So it seems like times one and a half seems like a scale factor that works here. The thing is, whatever you decide on, it's going to be the same number. You might end up going different directions and getting different numbers. For example, when I go top to bottom, it's times one and a half on both sides. 18 gets to 27 in the same way that 2 gets to 3. But if I go bottom to top, one fifth, that's supposed to be 1.5. Sorry out there in TV land. See, if I go the other way and divide, then I'm dividing by that same factor. But if I go across, am I still using 1.5 as a scale factor? No! Right? 3 times 9 is 27. Same as 2 times 9. There's my common multiplier, my scale factor. Let's say we had some big ugly numbers here and we did not know this was 9. How could we do it? We go opposite direction. Opposite operation, opposite direction. Meaning, if we don't know what 3 times box is to get 27, then we go 27 divided by box divided by 3 equals this. 
opposite operation, opposite direction, I get 9, 9 goes there, and 9 goes there. Okay, so that's that one. So this was a yes. And look at all that evidence we have. Okay, on the second one, we have 4 eighths and 25 fiftieths. Yes or no, and provide evidence. Well, here's another strategy. If I just simply go, what's 8 divided by 4? So I'm going this way, and I'm dividing. I get 2. So if I do the same thing in the same direction, what's half of 50, or 50 divided by 25? 2. So I have a common multiplier or divisor. Okay. What happens if I go this way and I say what's 50 divided by 8? 6 and a quarter. So if I go this way and ask what's 25 divided by 4, I better still get 6 and a quarter. And I do. So even though it's different number, six and a quarter is not the same as two. When I go same direction, same operation, I should get the same factor. Same, same, same. Okay? Let's do another one. This will be the third and final one of this video. Next video will be much shorter because we're using and talking about these strategies. And the more we use and talk about them, the less we need to talk about them. Let's see. What do you notice? What do you notice right now? Um... I notice that 3 times 5 is 15. So 5 is my scale factor, my multiplier. So the question is, does 4 times 5 equal 24? So you can tell, here's my notes from the previous video, all these strategies how did I know to use that one? I started simple. I picked the easiest thing that I noticed first. I know 3 times 5 is 15. I can prove that all day long. So that's my starting point. That's where I find my potential multiplier. I also know that 4 times 5 is 20. Not 24. So the answer here is no, and our proof is 3 times 5 equals 15. 4 times 5 does not equal 24. We can also prove this by cross multiplying. Heck, we're already nine minutes in. Why not show one more thing? We can prove it by cross-multiplying. A lot of you like to do that, so why not? So we'd be asking 3 times 24. Does 3 times 24 equal 4 times 15? Well, there's 3 times 20, which is 60. 60 plus 12, 72. 4 times 10, 40. 4 times 5, 20. 40 plus 20, 60. So here's a simple question for you. Hey, does is 72 the same thing as 60? No. Okay. So we've got lots of different ways to prove proportionality or disprove 
proportionality. Using these three examples from any random textbook. Stay tuned for more exciting video action where we get more complicated and we learn how to solve for a missing number in a proportion. Boom! And for now, that's going to be goodbye because I'm down to 6% on my battery. Bye!